Good afternoon, or morning, or evening, whenever you're taking a look at this. Uh, I've had a quick request to go through some two-step algebra problems, um, just so you guys remember the last couple of steps. So remember, the big thing in two-step algebra is we are looking for this following form, where the numbers... Uh, the letters are representative of any numbers. So remember, ax is a times x, plus b equals c. Now, the, the key thing here is that we still have to go back to this awesome framework that we started the year, which is order of operations. And what I really want you to lock into here is the fact that division and multiplication are on the same level. Okay, they're Essentially, they're the same, the same as addition and subtraction. They're on the same level. So even though this is a times x, this can also be x divided by a. Um, although this is positive b, this could be negative b. So the thing about a form is that it tells us kind of what we're down to. So this could be x divided by a minus b equals c. That's the same kind of problem. Because no matter where we are in order of ops, depending on what level it's at, are we at 1, 2, 3, or 4, that's the level we have to work to. So remember, division multiplication as they occur from left to right addition and subtraction as they occur from left to right. Okay, so that, those are the two main forms that we're looking for. And every algebra problem that you do will always come down to ax plus b equals c, or some permutation of that. Now, this could also be written like this. c equals positive b plus ax. Because remember, when we're dealing with algebra, we're dealing in terms. As long as I have a sign... I can move these terms around. This can be rewritten as ax plus b equals c. Okay, so I know there's been some confusion around that. I just wanted to clear that up. Okay, so the, the main rules of algebra, number one is simplify and collect like terms. Okay, number two is get x's to one side. Where you're concerned at this two-step algebra is rule number three and rule number four. We always want to get rid of the constant first. The reason being is that if I have ax plus b equals c, and I start dividing by a, well, if I divide this by a, that means I have to divide this whole term by a. So then I'm going to get ax plus b divided by a equals c divided by a. So what that does is it muddies up the, the equation. It actually makes it more complicated. Okay, so remember, constant is a variable that does not have, uh, is uh, a number that doesn't have a variable. Our coefficient is the number that's attached to the x with either a multiply or a divide. So the first step that you're concerned on is number three. Number three is move constant away from x using addition or subtraction. Okay. Rule number four is move the coefficient, I should say coefficient, <laughs> away from x using multiply or divide. The only time we ever use multiply or divide is in the very last step. Everything else is just using the opposite operation. Okay, so we do two things. The first one is we're going to do an example using just letters. And it'll probably confuse you, which is great. AX plus B equals C. So rule number three. Look, I've got a constant, I've got a coefficient, and it equals a single constant on the other side. So let's get rid of the constant. I'm going to opposite operation. What I do to one side, I do to the other. If I have positive B and I minus B, well, that equals zero. Those actually cancel out. So now I bring down what's left, just like in order of ops, ax equals c minus b. Now, how is the a attached to the x? 
It's with multiplication. So what we need to do is we need to divide by a. So I divide each by a. Now if this is a formula, a divided by a gives me 1. So that leaves me with 1x equals c minus b divided by a. That's actually the formula on how to solve these problems. Okay? Let's look at another quick one here. x divided by a minus b equals c. Well, again, which is my constant? My constant attached to the x is the b, but this time it's a negative b, so we need to add b. The opposite is positive b. So now I get x divided by a equals c plus b. Well, what do I have? I have a coefficient. That's a divide by. The opposite operation of division is multiplication. So this one here becomes a divided by a, that's 1. x equals c plus b times a. c minus b divided by a. Do you see how these things are very similar? They're just using the opposite operation. What I do to one side, I do to the other. Okay, let's use some numbers now. Number one, we're going to go 3x plus 4. What should that equal? Let's make it easy. Equals 12. Okay? Now, remember, what do I need to get rid of first? The constant or the coefficient? The 3 is attached by a multiplication. We can't multiply till the last rule. So what we have to do is we need to get rid of that positive 4. Remember, this is like the balance scale. Okay. So if I have a balance scale and I have 4 here and 12 here, I need to take that 4 off. Got to get it off. But if I take 4 off this side, I also have to minus 4 from that side. So, let's get rid of the constant. Step number three. Minus four from both sides. Four minus four gives me zero. I bring down my constant. This leaves me with three x equals, well, what's 12 minus four? Uh, it's eight. Awesome. That's step number three. Right there. Step number four, get rid of the coefficient using division or multiplication. Now, which one are we going to use? The three is attached to the x with a multiplication. So it's the opposite of multiplication. I divide by three. What I do to one side, I do to the other. So x equals eight divided by three. Now this is where math gets interesting. Can't leave it like that because this is an improper fraction. That was our last unit. So how many threes go into eight? Well, two threes is six, so I can take at least two out. Two times three is six. I've got two left over, so that's two and two thirds. That's my answer. X equals two and two thirds, right there. Okay? Now. Let's do one. I'm running out of paper. I'm writing too big. That's okay. You guys can see this. Let's do another example. Um, let's go x divided by 4 minus 3 equals 12. Same numbers, totally different problem. Now pause this and try and solve it. So pause right now. Okay, welcome back. I'm going to do this one fairly quickly. We've got number three. Rule number three is get the constant away from x. So we're going to add three to both sides. Shook. These cancel out. 12 minus three. Well, hey, that's nine. It's not going to work out pretty either. Now I get x divided by four. Write that down. A lot of you, what you do is that you kind of do all this cancellation, but then you forget to move this down. You want to keep it nice and simple. That stuff doesn't exist anymore. Now I've got to divide by 4. x divided by 4. The opposite is to multiply by 4. Remember, brackets are another way of showing multiplication. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 9 times 4 
is 1832 is 45. Is that right? No, that's not right. 2, 3, 4, it's 36. X equals 36. There's my answer. Good luck, guys. Uh, be brave. Go forward. Two steps. That's all you got to do. Rule number three. Rule number four. Okay, we'll see you soon.